Hi, folks. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, some things that have been seen recently on Soho and stereo images. First of all, in this video, I'm going to focus on the bright regions you see up at the top of this image taken with Soho's EIT imager. And you can see in the bottom left hand corner, it was taken on July 21st. And uh, for a brief period of time, all the EIT channels had this problem in them uh, with a couple of bright regions up at the top uh, that looked unusual to some people. There's also been a rumor going around that somehow these images were taken down or hidden or covered up. That's not true. You can still go on the Soho website right now and find them. In fact, uh, as of the time I'm making this video, they're still in the recent images list. You don't even have to look that hard. They're right there. Uh, if you are viewing this video later, you can easily go back into the Soho archive and pull up these images you see there at the timestamp at the bottom left hand corner. Just search for the images at that timestamp for the EIT imager and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, some people have found this link describing uh, a micrometeorite hit that occurred to Soho in February of 1998. And you can see that those bright regions appeared in the exact same spots uh, at that time as well. Uh, now, in the previous image, if you look carefully, you can see that the top of the image is actually canted at an angle. The, the whole image has been derotated uh, digitally so that the sun's orientation is constant from image to image. But if you were to leave it at the original orientation so that the top of the image was flat, you would see that these bright regions are in the exact same spot. And that has raised uh, some questions in some people's minds as to, for instance, um, if this were a new micrometeorite hit, why is the light leak appearing in the exact same spot? Did it pass through the same hole again? And for that matter, how did they fix it if it was struck by a micrometeorite? If we take a look at the SOHO team's meeting minutes from that day, we find a couple interesting things. First of all, the light leaks weren't created by the micrometeorite. They were already there, just not in all the channels and not as strong. We can also see that the spacecraft experienced an unexpected torque, indicating that it was indeed hit by a physical object around the same time that the light leaks suddenly became much more severe. There's a scientific paper available online which describes the degradation of the instrument over time. And one of the things it talks about is the meteorite strike that occurred in 1998 and the light leak visible in the AIT imager. And on the left, you can see images as they originally looked from the imager and on the right after the meteorite strike. And you can see that the light leak was already there from the beginning. It was only visible in one of the channels. It just became much more severe and visible in all of the channels after the meteorite strike. Now to answer what caused it originally, we have to go back to the very beginning. On December 2nd, 1995, the Soho spacecraft was launched on top of an Atlas II rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. And lift off of Soho and the Atlas vehicle on an international mission of solar physics. Roll program is in. Unfortunately, despite efforts to protect the spacecraft during launch, Vibrations of launch did damage the delicate filters of the EIT instrument. The filters consist of a cellulose material coated with aluminum of a very, very thin thickness, about half a percent the thickness of aluminum foil that you might buy at the store. So they tear very, very easily. And unfortunately, there was a tear in the stray light filter at the back of the instrument just next to the CCD. And that allowed visible light leaking through damage to the entrance filter to reach the CCD and produce that glare you see at the top of the images. Initially, it wasn't too severe. It really only appeared in one channel and slightly affected a second channel. Uh, but even in the channel it affected, it didn't overwhelm the image. So it wasn't too much of a concern. They continued to image through what they call the clear filter on the filter wheel. There are five slots on the filter wheel, one of which is left open to allow light to pass through directly to the CCD. But they also included spare filters in the filter wheel in case of a problem. And it's very good that they did because a problem really came up in 1998 when it was hit by a micrometeorite. The solution to the problem was simply to rotate the filter wheel so that one of these spare filters would block the light path and prevent stray light from reaching the CCD. It would be blocked before it would reach the damaged stray light filter. If we take a look at the meeting minutes from 1998 again, they actually make mention of this in the final paragraph that I highlighted. You can see that they're talking about actually rotating one of those spare filters into place that will unfortunately cause them to have to take longer exposures, but it will fix the stray light problem. So this answers the question of why a micrometeorite strike would continue to create stray light at the same place in the image as it was before the micrometeorite strike. The micrometeorite strike damaged the front entrance filter. That allowed more visible light in 
past the tear in the stray light filter at the back of the instrument and onto the CCD. That tear in the stray light filter was created at launch. That's in a fixed position. It didn't change simply because the meteorite hit the spacecraft. The meteorite damaged the entrance filter. That simply allowed more visible light onto that stray light filter. You can also see that they've divided the mirrors up into four quadrants. Each quadrant corresponds to a specific wavelength of UV light. They've coded each of the quadrants differently to give them the wavelengths of UV light that they want. They simply move the sector wheel to select the quadrant that they want. So obviously, if there's a tear in the entrance filter, the closer that tear is to a particular quadrant, the brighter the stray light will appear on the CCD. The only way to eliminate that then are with the filters that are in the filter wheel. Those filters are essential for filtering out visible light. That's why they are there. Unfortunately, as they get damaged, visible light can reach the CCD. So there's one of two possibilities as to why these light leaks reappeared on July 21st. Either an erroneous command was sent to the spacecraft that caused the filter wheel to cycle back to the clear filter once again, it's entirely possible, or a micrometeorite struck the spare filter in the filter wheel and damaged it, causing them to have to go to another backup filter. I don't know which of the, these possibilities is the case here, but in either case, the solution is basically the same. Rotate the filter wheel so that a good filter is in place. And that is indeed what has happened. Current images are returned to normal now, and operations have resumed as normal. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll address some rings that have appeared in stereo images. Have a nice day.